This is another game with tiles, and it's uh, from when he was a world champion, 1960, and it's against the German Grandmaster Onziker. And tile open v4, and we went into the Spanish opening, bishop b5a6. These are all main line moves. Rook e1, supporting pawn b5, bishop to b3, d6 to protect the e5 pawn and open this diagonal for the bishop in some lines. c3, so if knight a5, we can protect the bishop by hiding it away on c2. Black castles, h3 to discourage bishop g4. Of a knight to b8, which is a slightly less common variation, and we normally we see in this line knight to d7, knight to b6, so it's just rerouting the knight. So tau d4, knight to d7, and then c4. Now this line isn't seen too often and white is willing to sacrifice a pawn just to open a position often in the Spanish you get a more closed position for the first 20 odd moves and there's a lot of maneuvering so this one is just going to open the position so that Tal can get his pieces really active so we see c6 and then c5 giving up the pawn now black decides not to take the pawn here and he plays queen to c7 and then we have pawn takes on d6 the bishop recaptures and then the bishop goes to g5 now although the bishop on the g5 isn't pinning the knight as there's no queen behind it it does make life uncomfortable for black the idea of this move is that if knight, this knight was move away then we have bishop takes knight and it will wreck black's kingside position and pawn formation and because that knight can't move it means we have a threat pawn takes on e5 and then because the knight can't recapture because we'll double the pawns here the bishop would have to be given up for this knight and that's a very important minor piece for black it would give white the bishop pair and if we look at black's other bishop it's uh, a bit of a sorry state at the moment so black plays c5 here, and then we get pawn takes and c5, bishop takes, and then knight c3, looking at this d5 square. The most important aspect of this position though, is that the c and the d files are both open. So we see bishop to b7, getting the bishop active, and then a rook to c1, it's played by Tau. So that's looking at the bishop in c5 and the queen beyond it and just taking control of his file. So Onzika plays queen to b6, getting the queen out of harm's way and lining up against the f2 pawn. And Tao's going to stay true and keep his pieces nice and active and he plays rook e2, guarding the f2 pawn but also for an interbingo rook to d2 or c2. Now here, black plays for rook f to e8, guarding his e5 pawn, because whilst it was rook was on f8, we could play bishop takes knight, and if a knight took, would capture on e5, and if a pawn took, then black's king would be exposed. So rook f to e8. Now what we often see in chess is that when a piece moves to a new position, it leaves behind one of the duties that it was doing before. So this rook's coming to the e file and protected e5, but it's no longer guarding f7, so that's weak again, only guarded by the king. And Tau picks up on that immediately and starts making plans. So we see knight to d5. The bishop captures, Tau recaptures with his bishop, and then we see the rook move to the d-file and then Tau takes this moment to move to double rooks on the c-file and then now we've got the threat of bishop takes knight forcing pawn takes bishop because if a knight was to recapture this bishop would be hanging so black meets these threats with bishop to e7 and then Tau crashes in with rook to c6 and if we look at the two positions here, 
materials level but you can see that Tao's pieces just dominate the entire board it's got rooks doubled on the C file this rooks even creating pressure on the uh, sixth rank all black's pieces are tied up defending each other and this queen's now got to find a safe place now as it happens the best place for black to move his queen would have been b8 but then we simply see bishop takes and after recaptured rook takes pawn on a6 black can't go to b7 because then we just get rook takes knight opening the uh, attack on the queen discovering the attack on the queen and I want to guard his pawn to place queen to a5. Now, Tal saw the entire winning combination that it plays in this game at this point, and he started to prepare for it after this rook moved to e8. And we'll just see how this plays out. His next move bishop to d2. Attacking the queen and making life very difficult. But the bishop uh, move has got another purpose, which we'll see shortly. So b4 was played. And there were other pos possibilities there, but they all lose. And at this point, Tal played the move that finishes black off. So if you want to try and work it out for yourself, you can pause the video now and come back in a minute. Okay, here's Tal's move. Bishop takes f7, check. Now if the king doesn't take the bishop, we just take the rook and we've won the exchange and the pawn. So we get king takes bishop, queen to b3 check. Now this is uh, an important pattern to remember in your own games if you're planning a sacrifice, a bishop sacrifice on f7. If a queen can come to this diagonal and check and black can't interfere or put any pieces in the way it can be a very powerful move because it takes away the g8 square for black to run back to so we see queen to b3 check and at this point black resigned and we'll just show you what could happen if he plays king to f8 then we get knight to g5 threatening queen to f7 checkmate and that was the main advantage of playing bishop d2 attacking the queen he forced black to do something about that but what he's really doing was clearing the g5 square for this knight to come into so that was a very clever multi-purpose attacking move back in this position if we saw king g6 and we get knight to h4 check this pawn and this bishop take away v squares he can't go back to f7 because of a queen so he has to go to h5 and he's trapped over the side of the board it's obviously going to be a very easy checkmate queen to f3 check sacrificing a knight king takes h4 he can't go back so we just got to deliver the checkmate and um, there's a number of ways of doing this but the one which I think uh, is probably the nicest if we look at this if we could play g3 check that would almost be checkmate, but the king could take an h3. So all we have to do is defend that square, king h2, and whatever he plays next. g3 checkmate. So there we go, another great attacking game by Mikhail Tal. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.